Okay, so I'll go from the beginning, but it's, a, it's an interesting thing that the hospitals actually do recognize, this hospital in particular is recognizing that kinesiology is so important, but actually they still haven't got to the point of re recognizing that beyond that there is something else that, that, that is really important. Um, so I came to this because of my own uh, child, basically, but not just my own child, because I was a teacher. Uh, and I'm going to give you a little bit of the, uh, my background because it will show you the importance of these primitive reflexes, mm -hmm. not just for, um, you know, not just in childhood, but actually their ongoing importance. So um, let me see, where, where can I start? Yes, I went to, um, I started investigating them because I was teaching in a school, I, was I taught for 23 years, and I was teaching in a school where there were five parallel classes. And the head teacher said to me, what is it that you do that enables all your children to be able to read? And that was an interesting question because I was not trained to teach reading. I had got, I was, only, I was trained as a PE teacher and I really was absolutely useless at teaching reading, but what I was very good at was doing PE. And the reason I ended up um, doing PE uh, doing uh, teaching young children instead of doing PE was as soon as I trained as a PE teacher when I was 21 I ended up uh, in a car accident and broke my neck and back and that's how I know myself physically that what happens is that these reflexes that uh, enable us to survive early on can kick back online so one of the reflexes in this in this car accident that kicked back online for me was a, a reflex called the moral reflex which we'll, i'll talk about today and um so from the age of 21 to the age of 36 i was in this i had this moral reflex back up online that wasn't integrated and so internally, I was feeling what it was like to feel to have this moral reflex. And then at age 36, through kinesiology, I, it was integrated. And then my whole life shifted again. So um, it's like a lifelong thing. And um, so, so, so I wasn't really good at teaching reading. So I needed to look at what it was that I was doing. And what I realized I was doing was I was um, doing a lot of physical education. And I started to look at that. Why would physical education, why would movement help children to learn? And through that, I delved back and back and I came to the underlying reason. And the underlying reason was that physical education and movement integrates, uh, physical education and movement develops physical literacy. And then the next question was, so why is physical literacy important? And physical literacy was important because if a person is physical lit physically literate, it means they've integrated their primitive reflexes. So then the next question was, what are these primitive reflexes? Why are they having such an effect? Not just on children's uh, reading at that point, but actually on their emotional behavior as well. And so I started to investigate the primitive reflexes, how it affects learning. And at, I was 46 when I started doing the research, PhD research on, does movement help children to learn better? Uh, in other words, if we integrate primitive reflexes, does that help children to learn better? And at the same time, I was also looking at auditory processing. Does that help? If you, if you help children to um, process or, or, you know, better, uh, is that going to help children to learn better? So that was where I came in from that. But while I, whilst I was doing research, I started to look back at myself and I thought, oh, this is interesting now, because as a young child, I was smart. 
you know, I was kind of, I never felt dumb. But my problem was I wasn't able to translate that smartness onto paper or into my exams. So when I did my O levels, my A levels, I actually did quite badly. But for some reason, at a very early age, I knew I wanted to be a PE teacher. And so I ended up going to, I scraped my way in through to a PE teaching college where they did a degree and they did something called a certificate. And the certificate was for those people who weren't very clever. You know, the ones in the class, the, the slow group, the slow learners. <laughs> and they, they, they said, they fathomed that those who that were the slow learners needed to do more activity rather than more brain work because their brains won't be able to cope with it. So this is what they did for the slow learners. In the morning, we did the brain work. And in the afternoon, we just had to do loads of sports, uh, loads of basically play. And with the degree group, they had to do more, more brain work. Uh, after one year of doing this, I started to do so well in my slow learning group that I did so well with my exams that they decided to put me in the degree group. Now, that was really interesting because can you see what had happened? I had developed my physical literacy. And because I developed my physical literacy, that had an effect on my brain and my ability to output what was already there. It was like a powerful computer that is not able to, that you're typing on and there's a glitch there and it's just not doing it. So, so that came through my own, looking back, that came through my own experience. So I was seeing the effect of um, physical literacy and its importance within me. I was seeing the effect of physical literacy and its importance within the children that I was teaching. But thirdly, it's like the universe said to me, hey ho, let's just make sure you really know this is important. I started because, because of my own um, experience with kinesiology, I thought this thing was amazing, this integrating my moral reflex. I feel like a new person. I want to start, you know, learning about kinesiology. And I started learning about kinesiology whilst I was teaching. And whilst I was actually on a kinesiology course with Dr. Charles Krebs, um, amazing uh, kinesiologist, if you ever want to look, up and look him up. Um, my son, who was 15 at the time, was again a very bright boy, but was not able to output his, his capability. But unlike myself, he was also um, showing behaviors, you know, not coping uh, behaviors such as like outbursts of um, temper and stuff, inability to sit still, uh, inability to kind of cooperate in the classroom. He was often getting chucked out of the classroom. And at age 15, and he was basically like, kind of very close to attention deficit disorder. And um, although he was tested, they said, no, 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 it's not that. But this is the importance of integrating primitive reflexes, which I find out, found out myself through my son. Because he, he didn't have this ability to pay attention specifically around him, and was, his mind was all over the place. And you'll have seen those children, you know, their minds are all over the place. Um, he was walking, uh, crossing a road, and a bus ran over his foot. Like, can you see the absurdity of that? A great bus is a great big thing. And ran over his foot like he must have been really inattentive to actually what was in front of him so i was actually on a kinesiology course and i thought oh my god what that that has shown me that the, whatever he's got is life-threatening now and i got very interested and by some chance i happened to be sitting next to a lady who said oh i i know what his prob problem is he's got primitive reflexes and if you integrate those primitive reflexes, he'll be fine. I thought, primitive, what are these primitive reflexes? And, 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 I, and I ended up taking him to this lady. It was a three hour drive there and three hour drive back. She integrated his primitive reflexes and she sorted out his auditory processing as well. 
through sound therapy. And within three months, this boy was like new. In fact, I got, I've got a report, I, could, I can read that out for you. It says, after three months, it said, now that he has decided to start working, or now he's decided to start, uh, to stop sitting next to the time wasters, which actually, by this time, I had realized every single child wants to learn. Every single adult wants to learn. Nobody decides not to learn. And so there's a very simple reason to this. We know as human beings very early on that if we don't learn, we might not survive. It's an innate thing to want to learn. You will know yourself as an adult when you're sitting in an environment where it's hard to learn, it stresses you out. You want to be able to learn like everybody else is getting it. Why aren't I getting? Because deep down there is a primitive uh, need to learn because somewhere you think, one, I'm not going to survive and two, I'm going to be ousted out of the group because I'm not learning along with the rest of the group. So when a teacher says, oh, that child doesn't want to learn or is not interested in learning, I just want to say that's ridiculous. Everybody wants to learn. And that is one, was one of my other reasons in wanting to find out about these primitive reflexes. Uh, there was, a, there was an, a boy in my class called um, uh, Mohin, really intelligent boy, but for some reason, he couldn't get it down on paper, but more than that, he couldn't even hold a pencil like tightly enough to be able to write. So his grip was so light that he took him such a long time to write. And then he would, it would be so light. I used to think, what, what's, this boy is so intelligent. What's, what's his problem? Why can't he just hold a pencil and write out what is his intelligence? So as a teacher, I was interested in this. So I went down and had to look at his records. And I found this big, thick folder and in this folder was a set, an assessment done by an occupational therapist. And it just said he had all of these retained reflexes. And I remember looking at this big file thinking, okay, and like you've spent all this time writing this child has got all these issues. What are you gonna do about it? And there was nothing. And I'd been his teacher for a while and nobody had alerted me to it. And I thought, my God, this child, you know, is so intelligent. He's gonna go through his life and nobody's going to recognize his potential. So I started working with him and we had a massive change just by integrating his primitive reflexes. But first I had to find out how do you integrate primitive reflexes? And the way to integrate primitive reflexes is nature is very, very clever, is through the, um, the one through maturation. So as you get older you, and through is the program that is needed by the body to integrate primitive reflexes is movement. And usually it's the same movement as the actual issue. Now, when we go on a little bit, and I'm going to show you some particular um, uh, tests that you can do, you will see that nature uh, uh, makes the body do the same thing as a natural childhood play, like rolling integrates, uh, as, you know, helps to help sort out balance. But each of these reflexes, you end up nearly, the test is nearly the same as the movement you do to integrate it. It's like for like, it's like homeopathy, like for like actually helps. So nature is so clever. But what's happened is that we, uh, the, well not what we, but you know, medical actually doctors to start with, um, have started giving his advice about how to rear our children that is against the natural order. And one of the advices that doctors give, give people nowadays is put your baby to sleep 
on the back. Um, I have three uh, sons, one is 34. When he was born, the doctors used to say, put baby on the front. My one second son was born, doctors used to say, put baby on the front. And when the third son was born, they said, Doc, put him on the back. And obviously as a parent, I did that. But what happens when you do, when you completely start changing the natural order and putting baby on the back is you're actually start interfering with the reflexes. So that's the first point of interference that comes in. The way we're actually just, uh, and as we go through these reflexes, you will understand why this is, this is starting to interfere, in, interfere with the reflexes. The second interference that comes in through the, to the reflexes is through the way we rear our children. And, and that is not allowing them enough time to be on the floor, just crawling around, playing, crawling around, playing, because a lot of parents <clears throat> have you have started using um, equipment, uh, strollers, uh, baby walkers, car seat, seats, to actually, and then, to actually, inter it, that interferes with all of this. A baby who is put into a baby walker too early, you're actually starting to interfere with the reflexes because the, the, the longer a child crawls properly on their hands and knees, the more time there is for myelation of the, the, some of the areas in the brain the more time there is for the child to begin to coordinate the body. The ability to crawl brings in three things. It brings in the vestibular system, the proprioception system, and it's the first time that the body starts to get uh, the, the ability to use the eyes in a particular way. And uh, so one of the first questions I ask uh, a parent that comes to me, um, who's having say, issues reading is, did your child crawl? And the child might not crawl because a certain reflex was an integrated in a certain, at a certain time and this has a knock-on effect on their ability to crawl. And the second question I ask is, how well does your child balance? And what I mean by that is the ability to stand on one foot for 15 seconds at around the age of seven. That's all. I can go into a classroom and ask the children to stand on one foot, on the left foot, and then on the right foot. And then I can say, these five need to go in this group. That's how well they're reading. These five will be your top readers. These five will be doing okay with the reading. And these five will be struggling with their reading. Just on, their ability to balance. Because the vestibular system is absolutely key, not just to our ability to read, but our ability to um, function in the world. And I'll to talk a little bit about that. And that is, if, if the primitive reflexes aren't integrated in the correct order, that affects the vestibular system. And when astronauts go up in space, now you're talking about the top brains here. They're talking about the most physically literate people, healthy people, top brains. When they go up in space and they lose their ability to balance, in other words, because there's no gravity, what happens is they get something called space dyslexia. And they begin to mirror read or mirror write. And when they come back, to the earth, they have to um, be taught how to balance again. Like our ability, we are always constantly defying gravity. We're the only animal that constantly defying gravity. So that when these astronauts are taught to balance again, that gets rid, rid of this space dyslexia. And there's a guy called Dor. D-O-R-E, 
who found this out and he had a daughter who was dyslexic, he was a millionaire, he had plenty of money and he started to get hold of this machine that they, buy, you, they, that they um, check for balance that the astronauts were using. And by checking a child's balance and then giving them activities, move, simple movement activities to integrate their balance, they found now the child was able to read better because now they had the equipment for reading, not that there was magic reading, there was still remediation to be done. So these primitive reflexes are just affect everything. They affect your, um, it, uh, what a lot of people don't realize is primitive reflex, you don't outgrow them. If you've got primitive reflexes, they will continue forever unless you do something about them and so why would it matter because as an adult you keep building up compensations to enable you to do what you need to do just because you've got primitive reflexes doesn't mean you can't do what you, you know you want to do but what it will mean is you'll be under a great deal of stress doing it and um, for example if we look at a tennis player two tennis players, if you're interested in that, but you look with her, Nadal and, for, uh, um, oh my God, Fedra. If you ever watch Fedra hitting a tennis ball, it will look effortless. Fedra is very calm, amenable, and his body just looks normal. Uh, he often looks arrogant, like he hits the ball as if it's no, pro no issue. Because Fedra has no primitive reflexes and he's made it to the top of his ladder. Nadal, on the other hand, has primitive reflex issues. He, he's had loads of injuries. He's had to have a knee operation very young. He's had to build up his body. If you look at his body, it's more like it's a fighter's body. He had massive outbursts in his early career. He used to throw his racket around a lot. And he is right-handed, but he plays left-handed. So he's going against his natural order of the body. And um, he has some com ob obsessive compulsory type of issues like he always has to have his bottles lined up in a certain way when he's drinking his water and also all issues. The point is, he still made it to the top of his ladder, but it's really hard for him. And you will see that if you ever watch these two guys hit a ball, look at the face. The one is like, he's doing nothing and the other one is grimacing but it doesn't mean that he hasn't got to the, his motivation and determination, Nadal's is huge. But the toll it has in your body is immense. So it's not saying that if you've got primitive reflexes, and we all have a couple of primitive reflexes that aren't uh, integrated, that's normal. If we have a great cluster of primitive reflexes that aren't integrated, that's when it's an issue. These primitive reflexes also mimic other um, labels. So for example, children are labeled as ADD, ADHD. I've had loads of children who have, we've integrated their reflexes and they're not no longer labeled like that. You know, my son, as I said, he was very close to that and I thought he was ADD. Um, he, he, my son went out from being thrown out of the classroom a lot to actually getting an interview to Oxford. Do you, do you know what? That was actually the only issue with him. He was the bad boy at school. But when he got to sixth form, his greatest pride, his greatest achievement ever was when he was asked to be a prefect because a prefect is a good boy. And that was massive to him. But he wasn't being a bad boy deliberately. His body was letting him down. His primitive reflexes were kicking in and stopping him 
achieving what he could achieve. So other labels, I have had a child, autist, uh, not autistic, Asperger's, who I worked with for actually nine months, like, like a huge time. The guy was all over the place. At age five, he was um, thrown out of a Montessori school. Like, you know, Montessori is so flexible. You imagine how bad this was. I'm laughing, but it wasn't funny because that's ridiculous. Like somebody needs to look, needed to look at, anyway. He came to me when he was about 12 and a half. Huge issues at school and labored as Asperger's. When I finished working with him, I had to say to the mother, you're gonna to have to take him out of the school he's in because these teachers are still looking at him as the boy he was. She took him out and she had him reassessed and he was no longer classified as Asperger's. Because those behaviors that he was showing were primitive reflex issues, not Asperger's. I'm not saying that every child who has Asperger's can go through that, but I'm saying we have mislabeling and I'm saying again that what the Education Institute or doctors love is labeling. And what they don't love is, I've given this child a label. What am I going to do about it now? What can I do about this label? Um, you know, that's what I find, found with the guy called the Mohin in my, in my class. So, um, you know, that's where all my background kind of comes from. And it was kind of just piecing together all these different things and thinking, wow, so my own child, my own experience, Mohi, my teaching, the head teacher asking me, what, what is it that you do? And yes, I went on to do the research, PhD research and blow me. The class, I had five classes, uh, parallel classes. One class did loads of movement based on a systematic program. One class did sound therapy. One class did both. One class did nothing because we had to have a proper comparison. And we found out that the class that did uh, the movement did in the standard tests did the best. We found out that the class that did the auditory processing did really well in the reading because we use different tests, use tests such as um, reading test, uh, non-verbal reasoning, short-term memory, long-term memory test. Uh, we found out that actually when you did, when you do try to do both therapies together side by side, I thought that would work doubly, but no, it was too much for the body. The body needed to do one and then needed to do other. They didn't do as well as the movement class. And the ones that had no therapy, no intervention in school, you know, they didn't do as well as the movement class or the reading class. So it's very, very interesting. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go very specifically onto primitive reflexes because this was more general. I wanted you to see how it affects different people. Oh, one more, one more thing before I go on specifically. So. And if you remember, I said that primitive reflexes can come back online at any time and affect your behavior and lots of things. So uh, with my accident, my primitive reflex, my moral reflex came back on. Um, my ex-husband had a stroke and when he had that stroke, all those reflexes came back on. So he, he, he found his balance was out. His eyes weren't functioning properly. He was, he at early on, he had to like close one eye to be able to see because both eyes were seeing both images. So they needed to, you know, eyes need to converge to one image. So you're not. And so it kicked back all his reflexes having the stroke. And so we had to work on the reflexes. So any, do you remember early on, I said any kind of trauma can kick in the reflexes. And 
the way that children are uh, allowed to be born now, or the way we are allowed to give birth, is traumatic. I'm sorry. The hospitals have no idea. They, it's, it's a factory. It's how quickly can I, I'm going to induce you. That means I want to induce you because I want to rush the, the birthing process. The minute you induce a, a woman, you're actually interfering with the moral reflex. Because nature has given the, the woman a moral reflex to make sure a baby is born at the right time in the correct way, at the right length of interval. The minute you cesarean, you've messed up all the reflexes. Anybody, any child who's been born with a cesarean needs to integrate, have their reflexes integrated. As I go through each reflex, you'll know, you'll see why. Um, then they come into these very noisy hospitals, lights, etc. Now you're affecting their auditory moral reflex or their visual moral reflex. So the way the child just comes into this world in, is in a very stressful environment. And that stress, instead of allowing the reflex to be integrated, just gets it locked in and then and then it's set. and then immediately the baby's taken away. Now you're actually interfering with the bonding reflex. And then, oh, don't put baby on back. Put baby, uh, sorry, don't put baby on the front, put baby on the back. Now you're interfering with the asymmetrical tonic neck writing reflex, which has a knock-on effect on the way the child develops his neck muscles, which has a knock-on effect on the way the child actually will hold a pencil, which is a not knock-on effect on whether the child will crawl properly or not, which is a knock-on effect on and on and on. Because if the child doesn't crawl properly, it's like the two sides of the brain in, brains don't kind of um, integrate properly. Brain integration is massive um, for reading because the left side of the brain looks at the details, breaks down the actual text, but the right side of the brain gets the meaning. When I used to teach, I used to see these kids that were really good at reading, and I'd say, what have you just read? And they had no idea. Because the integration of the two hemispheres of the brain wasn't allowed to come online through movement. Physical literacy is vital for literacy. That's why it's called physical literacy. We are embodied, we are bodies, and these bodies need to be able to move in the way that they need to be able to move so that you can do the other things. Gross motor skill is the foundation for fine motor skill. The problem is if the primitive reflexes aren't integrated, the children don't develop grow good gross motor skill, they don't develop fine motor skill. If you have an inability to control your body because your primitive reflexes haven't been integrated, and by control of our body, I'm gonna actually give you a little sample now, we're gonna get up and do this. Um, and you'll think, well, that's so easy, I'll, I'll be able to do this. So I'm gonna ask you this question. If, if, your, body, if your body can't sequence easily, then you'll find it hard to sequence abstractly easily. In other words, if you think of our timetables of maths, it's all logic sequencing. It's all logic. If your body cannot logically move in the way you want it to move, of course you're going to have a problem with logic sequencing. It, it makes sense. But teachers teach children abstractly before they allow the body to be able to feel concretely what it is like to sequence. So I'm going to show you a very simple, we're going to do a very simple thing. This is on one of the sequencing activities that helps with the postural reflexes to integrate. And you'll see it, how, how simple it is, but actually you think, oh my God, 
you know, why, why can't I just do this little simple thing? But this little simple, simple sequence that I'm going to show you, um, when I was doing the research, I had two twins. One loved doing these sequences and one didn't. The one that really loved doing the sequencing developed his math skills amazingly well, did much better than his twin. I don't know why one chose it and one didn't. Because he was logically sequencing his body and maths is logic. So what I'd like you to do is to stand up and we're, we're all gonna, gonna stand up and hopefully you'll be able to see me. So the one thing as you're doing this, you'll actually feel better and you'll be able to take in a lot more of what I'm actually saying. So all you're going to do is to move one arm, one leg, another leg, another arm, and then maybe you'll do it together as well. So just standing up, feet a little bit apart. All I want you to do is to move I'll do it with my left arm, but you do it with your right arm, so you'll be able to mirror me. So just move your right arm in that way, okay? And down. Now move your, I'll just show you left leg. You're just gonna move it like that, lift it and down, okay? That's it. That's how you're gonna move your body. It's not hard, is it? Okay, so let's do it properly now. So your right arm, and down, your right leg, and down, your left leg, and down, and your left arm, and down. Now you're going to reverse it. Left arm, left leg, right leg, and right arm. Simple movement, isn't it? So you're going round one way and you're reversing it. Let's just do that one first again. So arm, leg, leg, arm. Reverse it. Arm, leg, leg, arm. Right, now what I want you to do is to move your right arm and right leg at the same time. So you're going to go like that and back and the other side and back. Now you're going to reverse it. So going from the other side and back and this side and back. Now you're going to, so simple, right arm and left leg up and down, left arm and right leg and down. And now you're going to reverse it, left arm, right leg and right arm, left leg. Okay, and then finally, you're going to do uh, right arm, right leg, and down, right arm, left leg, and down, left arm, left leg, and down, left arm, right leg, and down, and now you're going to reverse it. Left arm, right leg, right arm, opposite again, and together. Now, that's just one simple sequence. And what you have to do is, can you see how I'm actually being able to move this without thinking about it? I can actually just do it together like that. Obviously that's because I'm used to this, but that's how quickly a child would have to be able to move it. So I want you to sit down um, so that the movement is coming from the body rather than from the mind. Now, I want to show you how movement, because primitive reflexes are all integrated by movement. I want to show you how movement all happens in the brain. You know this simple sequence? Don't worry about the sequence because actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to email me and the sequence is all in here. It's a little book that I'm going to post out to you. Okay, so you'll, you'll have something with that. Uh, but also on the YouTube channel, uh, YouTube channel of the Simple Physical Literacy, these movements are all on there and I'll, I'll send you links of where you can um, 
uh, you know hear a lot more about the reflexes uh, on the YouTube channel. Now I just want to show you um, how the movement is actually coming from your brain and not your limbs. So this time you, um, I want you to put your hand on your knee okay and your arm is going to be your index finger okay so that's your arm and your leg is going to be your toe okay so just move one toe now i want you to start with your right index finger move your right index finger now move your right toe move your left toe and your left index finger now reverse it left index finger left toe right toe and right index finger now right toe right index finger left toe left finger reverse it left toe left finger right toe right finger opposite right finger left toe left finger right toe reverse it left finger right toe left finger um sorry right toe left finger and finally right toe right finger right toe left finger left toe left finger left toe right finger and uh, sorry left left finger right toe reverse it left finger right toe left and left right finger and left toe and right and right now which was harder Catherine my left well did you find it? no what what i mean which is harder was was it harder to do the big movements was it harder to do the little movements towards the end each time i got mixed up it was the and I had to do, say, the left foot and the I right. know, but, but what I'm asking the question, the question is, was it harder when you had to move your whole arm and whole leg, or was it harder when you had to move your little finger and your little toe? My little finger and little toe. Yes, because that is fine motor skill. Was it your little finger and your little toe moving it, or was it your brain? My brain your brain isn't it yeah, definitely. you see you feel it now so so this is what schools don't get they don't get that you need to get the gross motor skills working functioning concrete sequencing before abstract sequencing concrete sequencing is gross motor skills is lots of sequencing abstract is like the maths two times two is four two times three is six four six eight ten it's just a sequence arm arm leg leg arm arm leg leg together together opposite that's just a sequence if a child is unable to perform those sequence the bigger sequence then of course the abstract sequence is it going to be hard? Now the question is, why would you be able to not perform these sequencing? Because there are some primitive reflexing reflexes that are, aren't allowing your body to be physically literate to perform these sequencing. So that is why physical literacy is important. And how do we get more physically literate? We make sure all our reflexes are integrated. That sequence that I've just showed you is a, is a very simple sequence that helps with the postural reflexes. It doesn't, uh, uh, but just, just helps with physical literacy and postural reflexes. However, when there are primitive reflexes that are not integrated, we need to do specific exercises. And I'm gonna show you some of those exercises today. Yeah. So 
I've talked a lot about this, why does physical literacy matter? Because children learn through their body, but to be able to learn through their body, they have to have their uh, primitive reflexes integrated. Postural control is very important um, because the ability to feel um, comfortable in the standing position gives a child their security. So, um, um, the, the balance, balance is absolutely vital. So balance is not just vital for reading, as I was saying to you, but balance is also vital because it gives a child a sense of security, okay? It's, it gives the child that sense of where is my body in relation to the world? Where do I stand in the world? Because you are housed in a body. <clears throat> and it's the physical security necessary to provide a reference point for lots of uh, mental operations as well. So I will let you have this uh, um, PowerPoint presentation. So you don't need to write all of this down. Um, but obviously you might write some of what I'm saying. So we need to have good balance because a prim we have a primitive need to be able to get away quickly. All right, that makes us feel secure. If we don't have good physical literacy and if we don't have good balance, but then we are actually going to have a problem with directions. Because good balance is about your internal compass, your right, left, uh, up and down. And if you haven't got good balance and good internal compass, then when you're looking at, say, a letters, you'll have, you'll have problem with their directional, like PD, P, D, B, D, all of that. It's a vestibular based skill. So uh, physical literacy is not just about our uh, ability to read literacy but it's about our ability to navigate through the world now if physical literacy is poor it's going uh, it's going to have there's going to be a balance the uh, issue with balance and if balance is poor that gives us an issue with postural stability because we're always defying gravity now, if we have got poor balance, what happens is there is a problem with the eye control, all right? Um, and also, if there is a problem with balance, there is this a problem with background and foreground, a, um, like a peripheral effect. So uh, when I go on to the moral reflex, I will explain how this works, all right? If there is poor balance, this affects the head, okay, how the head is sitting on the body. This affects how the eyes are functioning in the head. And then what we get is we get a problem with convergence, accommodation, tracking, directional awareness, and different symbols. All of that is needed for reading. So gravitational postural stability is vital for reading. Remember earlier I said it was important. How the eyes work is all based on your balance, your gravitational security. So if you've got poor balance, that's going to affect the way your head's sitting there and it's going to affect your eyes. And the way that it affects your eyes is almost like the eyes are looking at whatever they're trying to track. And we're talking about tracking words on a page as a moving camera. Um, so ocular motor uh, skills are very important because ocular motor is how the eyes are functioning within the body is it affects all um, uh, reading basically um, the thing with these primitive reflexes is they affects physical literacy so every child who goes into school should actually just be assessed very simply and see, has this child got some primitive reflexes that aren't integrated? Because they're not that hard to integrate. The body has given uh, a very simple solution 
to integrate reflexes, that's through movement. And systematic movement will actually integrate these reflexes. So if every child who's going into school is assessed at age five, you can just have a look at what is the maturity of the central nervous system. And what has been proven is an Im immature motor system, physical literacy, uh, that there is an effect on education, lower educational performance and behavior. So poor behavior as well. So when we are looking at the motor skills, when we're looking at how a child moves, um, we're looking at the central nervous system. Um, and physical literacy, so whether the primitive reflexes have been integrated or not, is the ABC of the brain and the body. So we need development ready, uh, a, 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 so attention, balance, coordination are all vital for the development ready, readiness for, for schools. So how does physical literacy develop? And that question is, how do primitive reflexes integrate? Okay, well, through maturation and physical interaction. In other words, the child needs to keep moving. Um, so I, I talked about crawling, how balanced vision and proprioception, pro proprioception is the, it's the first way when a child is crawling is all linked in together. And how the visual distance for reading is vital when a child is crawling. It's actually getting the eyes to read. Um, uh, the, these two guys found in 1975 that 70% of children with reading difficulties omitted the stages of crawling. And as I said earlier, why wouldn't a child crawl? Because it's a natural childhood development. Well, that is because their ref primitive reflexes weren't integrated. So it's a, it has an effect on that. The other thing with primitive reflexes is that it's about your ability to be confident and secure in the world. Okay, so if the child has some reflexes that aren't integrated, that is actually going to affect their confidence. And I'll give you a little um, story about this. So I was, I was teaching this a boy who was just coming up to age 11. So he would be leaving the primary school and going to a as a uh, secondary school and every morning his dad used to walk him to school because there was a bridge but I'm not talking about a rickety old bridge I'm talking about a bridge where cars drive across he couldn't walk across the bridge so his dad had to cross him over the bridge and I thought to myself, oh my God, this boy is going to go to high school and his dad's going to walk him to school he's going to be like bullied you know and I thought why 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 is he finding it hard to cross that bridge it's not like a rope bridge and then I thought my god I wonder if he has issues with uh, his balance because if if there are issues with balance you're not likely to get up on anything that's higher than the ground because you've got that issues with balance on the ground. Why would you put your body through getting up on anything higher? So here now was a child who was impacted by lack of balance on his confidence to walk across the bridge. All I did with him was get him up on one of those, you know, like tables that you have in the gym, get him up on there, help him jump off. First of all, he wouldn't even jump off there. First of all, he wouldn't get up there. So went from a low, just up, 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 up. All I did was help him sort out his balance through physical education, through PE, and blow me, the guy no longer had a problem crossing the bridge. Because now he felt he was balanced on the ground. So can you see how that, uh, um, inability to do that affected his confidence 
And, and can you see how a simple thing like that could have affected his uh, experience in school? You know, can you imagine like, all the boy, why is your dad walking you to school? Is he going to say, I'm afraid to cross the bridge? But do you see how these integrating these primitive reflexes is vital, not just for your child being able to learn better, but the confidence and the security. So what causes problems of physical literacy? Well, primitive reflexes, retained primitive reflexes. The word retained is very, very important. Um, and it's important because the primitive reflexes should not be retained. Primitive reflexes are there very early on to help the, the, the child survive the birthing process, the child survive the first year of life. So Mother Nature is very, very clever in giving us primitive reflexes to make sure we survive. If, but if these primitive reflexes are retained instead of integrated, and as they become integrated, they then move on from primitive reflexes to postural reflexes. Um, you know, you, you're allowing natural development. Postural reflexes cannot come online if primitive reflexes are retained. And postural reflexes need to come online because um, what you're wanting is this ability to navigate the world. But also postural reflexes are there to make sure that as we're defying gravity all the time, that our posture is always upright. So a postural reflex will do this for you. If I, can you see, I'm sitting upright now. If I decide to bend down uh, sideways like that, my head should automatically, can you see my head automatically wants to start staying upright that way, yeah? My head won't go like that. It will go like that, even though my shoulders are going like that. If you get a young baby, about six months, and they're sitting down, just take them to the side. If the head is going to the side, that means they have they haven't got their postural reflexes. What should happen is as you take the baby to the side, their head should go that way. That is what a postural reflex is there for. Whatever way your body is moving at any given time, it tries to maintain the head in a certain posture because the eyes need to see in a certain way. If you turn around like that and try and read this, that's dip more different than if you're looking at it straight. Yes, makes sense, doesn't it? So, if, however, if the primitive reflexes aren't integrated because of birth trauma, because of interference from the hospital staff while having birth, because of the way we bring up the children by not putting them on the, in the correct positions at the time they need to be in the correct position so the natural development order happens, because we're giving them too much equipment to mess around with and they're not using their body, because we are afraid to let them just play freely because we're afraid to let them climb freely because actually climbing is going to sort out postural uh, uh, reflexes and gravity and balance because we are so busy getting them to sit down at age five and start trying to write 
which is fine motor, and try and get them to read, which is, which is getting their eyes to track tiny little things. When they have, don't have control of their body gross motor, when they don't have control of their eyes, eyes don't come online, don't have the ability to, to look at words properly until the age of seven. Because when they go to school, now the teachers are thinking the more they sit down, the more they listen to me, the more they will learn. So we stunt children's process, growth, development, by trying to teach them something at age five, when really they're not ready to learn all of this until the age of seven, which is when all of this comes online. You know, trying to potty train a child before the equipment is ready is a waste of time. They don't have the equipment to hold their bladder. It's the same thing trying to teach them to read too early. So a child who's taught to read at seven has everything online. It's everything is working. You know, if they've been allowed to go through the developmental process, integrate all their reflexes, make sure all their postural reflexes are online, they're going to find it easy. In Europe, they, they start doing formal education at, now, at seven, not at five. The eyes are not ready, the child is not ready, the body is not ready. At five, they should be running around jumping around, doing little, doing lots of gross motor bodily things to make sure that gross motor has been developed so that when the school starts to want them to do fine motor skills, such as holding a pencil, such as tracking a, a line of symbols, I mean, can you see that? A tracking, do you know reading? How big is a reading thing? You will go and try and ask a, ball, a child to track a ball and they won't be able to track a ball. And then you say, can you track these little tiny little symbols? And you wonder why the child can't read. Those two boys sitting there are developing their gravitational security. Climbing the tree, climbing walls will help balance. How do you develop balance? Get the child any form where you are asking the body to move around in this way. So any twirling, twirling round, 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 or any rolling or any climbing will sort out balance. Automatically, the body's so clever. Any child who wants to go and do some climbing, okay, make sure it's safe, but let them climb because they're developing balance. So that playground out there in the park is sorting out their physical literacy and therefore it's going to help them to read. It's going to help them with their literacy is going to sort out their gross motor skills, it's going to help them to sequence their body in a certain way, which will mean when they come to sequencing and logic in maths, it's going to help them. So if you if you just, I mean, I was running around till I was age seven, I was born in Kenya, there was no school, I was just running around the garden till I was seven. I, okay, I went on to do a PhD. But I remember when I started reading, it did take me long, even though I later found out I was dyslexic, but I was had lots of equipment that was ready. So the ability to decipher digits or um, symbols on a paper only comes online at the age of seven. If all the primitive reflexes are all sorted out and partial reflexes online.
And so when you then present a child and you try and teach the child to read, the equipment is ready to, to do it. You like trying to get this really, you've got really uh, a computer with very little memory, right? And you're trying to load a powerful program in it. Is it going to work? No. You've got to make sure that the computer is ready to receive the powerful program. You go back and you do something with the memory, whatever, of the computer. You go and work on the computer to be able to accept a powerful program. Reading is a powerful program that you're trying to push, push into a person's body. Well, first, why don't you just ask the question, is this body ready to accept this program? Education is a powerful program. Is this body ready to accept the uh, program? Because if it's not ready, what can we do? Well, let's go back and have a little look at this body. What's wrong with this body? Oh, they've got primitive reflexes that haven't been integrated. If I integrate the primitive reflexes, that's going to help postural reflexes. That's going to help physical literacy. Now I can go and start input literacy. But also, not only is it going to help that, it's going to help their confidence and security. If a child is feeling more confident and more secure, easier to learn. And also, if a child is feeling confident and secure, easier to have good emotional modulation, the good, uh, good balance, good, all the integration of that is actually going to make the child more emotionally secure as well. So I think before we um, uh, continue, let's have a little break. We'll move around. Uh, let's have a, uh, a 15 minute break. Get yourself a drink, go to the loo, whatever. And then when you come back, we're going to do the little sequence again. So that will just help your do you know when I was doing the, my PhD, I did all, there are eight sequences. So when, when you give me your email, uh, when you send me your address, I'll, say, I'll post you this book out. You do all of those eight sequences, you or your child or a child. Um, it really, what it does is it's like, um, sets your brain ready to do the work. So I used to do the sequences while I was doing a PhD. And it was really helpful. And there is another, uh, in the book, there's another one. It's, a, it's, a, it's not actually part of the simple sequence, but it's just another simple thing called simple brain yoga. And it's just moving the body in a certain way. And when you move the, it's, this, it's, it takes like minutes to do it. But when you move the body in this way, and then you sit down to do some uh, computer work yourself, try it out. So in the book, there's simple brain yoga. Try to, you'll find you'll be able to retain your attention for about two hours after doing a simple little movement. And that's what I used to do that all the time when I was doing my PhD, I used to think, you know, like I was 46, I was getting on a bit as well. So um, any, any help. So I, apart from anything else, I know that these uh, uh, movements and just one more thing before we have our break. What they have found is um, two things. If a child has primitive reflexes that haven't been uh, integrated, then they don't like doing movement. They don't like doing physical education. They don't like doing sports. They don't like running around. But when I go through all the individual reflexes, you'll see why. So they're not going to move around a lot. Okay, so that so they're not going to be physically literate. Now, what they have found is. Uh, Oh, older, old age, older people, seniors we'll call them, 
cool, keep moving, keep their cognitive abilities intact. In other words, those seniors who are still physically active, physically literate, have, are more cognitively secure. You know, all of this um, Alzheimer's and stuff like that. And they found that one of the most powerful ways of stopping cognitive decline for seniors is the salsa. Not some vaccine, not some medication, not some good hospital therapy, the salsa. Very simple. The salsa, <laughs> by the way, I, I've taken up learning the salsa in the last couple of years because I want that cognitive, <laughs> I don't want the cognitive decline. The salsa has two movements that are very important in the salsa. Movement one is a step walking forward and walking back. The whole of the salsa is based on step, step forward, step, step back, step, step forward, step, step back, step, step. That's the whole of the salsa. What's that? That's just walking, walking forwards, walking back, walking forwards. The second thing about the salsa is round, 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 twirl, 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 step, step, step forward, step, step, step back, step, step, step forward, step, 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 let me twirl you, let me twirl you, go the other way, go the other way, step, step forward, go, go back. That's the salsa. And you remember I said any action that you're going round and round, rolling around this way or this way, keeps, develops your, um, uh, balance. So therefore, here's the thing, keeping your sense of balance, which actually declines as you get older. So you may find that you were all right on, you know, the big fairy fairground rides. And now you suddenly don't like them. So you, you actually think, I don't like them because I know what could go wrong. That's not right. Do you know what it is? Your balance has gone off. So now you're a bit scared to go around on them. Because as we get older, our sense of balance declines. And we have to maintain our balance. If you, as an adult, can maintain that sense of balance as you get older and older and older and older, it maintains your cognitive ability. And now they've started all doing salsa in, you know, the, the senior citizen's home. So th this is why physical literacy is so important. Not just because you can learn better, not because you'll be more emotionally regulated, but also it'll stop your, your cognitive de decline as you get older. But listen, you're not going to enjoy, you're not going to do anything if, if physical literacy hasn't developed because you didn't bother to, well, I'm, no, that's not right. Uh, you had something that stopped your primitive reflexes not integrating. Yeah? But I'm gonna actually now say, yeah, you didn't bother as an adult, as soon as you found out you got primitive reflexes and you didn't bother integrating them, then look out for the cognitive decline in your old age. <laughs> because you're not going to like doing something that's hard. Running is the ability to coordinate the opposite arm to the opposite leg. That is running. If you have an ATNR reflex that is not integrated, you won't have the ability to coordinate the opposite leg to the opposite arm because the ATNR reflex will keep you into a position where your, con uh, 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 organ your, your ability to organize your same arm and same leg is more powerful. 
Now you will have seen people running and you think, well, that looks so easy. And you would have thought, you don't know what it was. Next time you see a person running, watch them. Watch if as the right leg moves forward, the left arm, is it the opposite? Are they running so it's opposite? Or are they running so that the same arm and the same leg move forward, but what you will actually see often is the arms will be by the side and the legs will be moving by themselves. You know, this, this action, when you're running, is fluency, is physical literacy. But if you move your same arm and same leg when you're running, you see those people sometimes that are running and you're looking and you think, they're going to fall over any minute. That's because they will nearly, because they're moving same arm and same leg. Now, if, and, and those people find it really hard to run. So why would they keep doing it? It's not that you like running, it's that you find it easy to run because your reflexes are integrated. It's not that you like sports, it's that you find sports easy. We know anything we find hard, we don't do it. So it's 10.56. Uh, uh, let's have 15 minutes, so that would be just, uh, yeah, to come back at quarter past, move around a little bit, yeah, and have a drink and go to the loo, and then we'll come back at quarter past 11. Is that okay? Right, brilliant. Okay, see you then. So what's been found out is that the cerebellum part of the, the brain, the brain stem, uh, particularly the cerebellum where all movement occurs, um, has just more of function than just movement. And so there's been new understanding about the brain and that's the new understanding is beginning to associate how movement is helping, it, it is involved with so many other things. So. One of, the, one of the things that they've got uh, uh, looking at is the cerebellum part, is, which is, is the part of the brain that initiates movement and coordination. And that what they're finding is so lack of physical literacy is even linked into mental health disorders. And what they're finding is a lot of um, um, people in prisons have um, um, lack of uh, physical literacy. So their primitive reflexes aren't integrated. So the cerebellum has all these functions that, you know, that they were previously unaware of. And so it's not just limited to balance and coordinating physical movement, but there's growing evidence to show there's a, a, a role in thinking and, and emotions as well. And also that it's linked in with planning in judging time in some emotional cognitive disorders and some uh, cognitive processing of the word. And if the cerebellum is not fully developed, which is where all movement takes place, uh, problems with coordination, memory, restlessness, 
restlessness or high activity levels, distractibility, distractibility and difficulty with learning. What's really interesting is there was a sense at one point that the brain is just um, uh, locked, uh, but now there is all this evidence to say there is neuroplasticity of the brain and that it can uh, continue to be trained and um, improved and kind of developed. Um, what's interesting about the primitive reflexes is that uh, primitive reflexes are there for survival and then they should be actually uh, integrated. Um, and that there is the way to integrate them is through movement. But it's almost like there's a the, the 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 memory capacity is there and that this program can be put in at any time of your life so if your primitive reflexes aren't integrated by the time you're 50 you can still integrate them at any age uh, because um the 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 body is ready to receive the movement that will actually integrate that reflex and which is very powerful to know because these primitive reflexes will also be prevalent in adults still. They haven't gone away, they've just been compensated for. And the reason I particularly like to work with kinesiology and the primitive reflexes is it, I have found in any therapy, no matter what therapy you use, if the primitive reflexes come online, then it takes over everything. So you might be doing balances and stuff. My, that same, um, the husband did meditation for nine years. Like, I mean, you know, he, was a, he, he had a massive ability to meditate. Uh, by nine years, I don't mean meditate 20 minutes a day. His work was actually sitting in meditation for eight hours a day, uh, you know. So here, here was a guy who was able to maintain that uh, meditation for that long. So had good control over his body, good control over his mind. But once the stroke happened, the primitive reflexes came online. It just hijacked it all. So as a therapist, even with adult, you will find sometimes that if they have primitive reflexes, they, those reflexes can be hijacked. The reflexes will hijack the therapy, will hijack the body. They're supposed to hijack the body. When we come to the moral reflex, you'll see why, it, why, why they do that. Um, so in terms of reading and learning, um, there's just this is just some evidence but in particular successful motor planning is a precursor to sequential activity educationally which i've kind of touched on already so let's now get to the primitive reflexes but you needed all of that background to kind of know the impact of them and their importance so the primitive reflexes originate from the reptilian brain. Therefore, the primitive reflexes are there for survival. And that is why they need to be um, uh, integrated. They're automatic physical responses. So there is no reason or thinking required. They're automatic. This is very important. This is why primitive reflexes at any age can hijack your uh, emotions. They're there for survival and they develop in a very particular order. And they integrate, not only do they come online in a particular time, so for the fear reflex comes online very early in utero, in, in, in utero. And then this fear reflex should integrate into the moral reflex. And the moral reflex comes online 
just before the baby is born to help it to survive the passage down the canal and to survive the first couple of weeks afterwards. So that's a particular sequential order they come online. Then the ATNR comes online just after the moral reflex because the ATNR is about doing with the turning of the neck to help that movement going down the birth canal. And in fact, there was a time where when a baby was born, in, as, as the baby came out, the head came out, the midwife would spend quite a while turning the head before it came out fully. And guess what? They were integrating that reflex. Nowadays, nobody touches anything because they're too scared if something might happen that they'd be blamed. So the ATNR comes on at a certain time and has to be integrated by a certain time. If that ATNR isn't integrated by that time, it has a net knock-on effect. So all of these reflexes come online at a certain time and are integrated at a certain time. And by the, by the end of the first year, they should all be integrated. They should no longer be retained because they've done their job of making sure the baby survived the first year. Once the primitive reflexes are integrated, what does come online after that are postural reflexes. Postural reflexes help to maintain you upright against gravity. They're, that's their job. So they automatically adjust the head, adjust the eyes, the head, which are just into uh, the eyes then are just into the head to make sure you always have good visual uh, capacity uh, and also this this ability to maintain it's automatically you shouldn't have to think about it um, like for instance even your daughter might be having to think about maintaining herself upright on that bike and in particular the moral reflex is a reflex that is initiated. In other words, it's set off by the head moving back, like looking upwards. And with the head moving back, that is about the vestibular system. So it could be that the moral reflex hasn't been integrated because of actually the just kind of insecurity, anxiety. That's what it's indicating to. So any activity where there would be any off balancing of the head, which would be in the, the, the riding a bike. See, it, what would happen is if the, if the tendency would be for the body to go like this, but the head should really go up like this, that would be really interesting to know. You know, she slightly goes on one side to see is the head right upright. Um, so all of this comes online automatically. Now, if it doesn't do it automatically, it means that some part of the child's system brain is having to do it. And therefore some capacity of the brain has been taken up to try and do, do these things that should be automatic. They should also integrate by repetition. So repeating the same movement over and over again, integrate them. That doesn't mean that you have to show them how to, to integrate, the, integrate them. The child will repeat the same movement over and over again. You might have observed a child just jumping on, jumping off, jumping on, jump, and you might look at them and think, aren't they fed up with all that? They're just doing that over and over again. But actually, that is actually the repetition that there is required for the body for something. It's an automatic thing and it's repetition. But if that repetition is interfered with, obviously then um, it's not going to happen. So a lot of children, I see children climbing up on a wall and the mother will shout, oh, get off, get off, you'll fall over. No, 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 no. The child needs to get on the wall to learn actually. I, I, so there is not even worried about and fall over. To, to one, learn about balancing themselves, but two, children need to fall over. And children need to fall over because they need to learn how to fall over. 
So, uh, for instance, I was walking in the park uh, months ago when I was allowed to go to the park and walk freely. And there was a, a family going, there was an uphill, like the, a hill. So I was right far behind. I could see this family with the little boy on a bike, actually. And the mother and the father were behind and the boy was riding his bike. And he would have been about six or seven, young. And as he was riding his bike, it was a big grassy bank this side. He was actually riding on the, like, like a little pavement. Suddenly, don't know, I don't know what happened, but he fell off his bike. And as he fell off, I watched him starting to roll, 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 roll down to the very end. A really long roll, because I remember watching him. I was more interested in the reaction of the parents. And I watched them just standing there watching the boy roll, 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 because they had taught the boy how to fall. So although it had fallen a long way, the boy knew to roll, because that is what's going to stop him getting hurt. Then, once the boy stopped at the very bottom of this hill, they didn't say a word. They didn't show fear. They didn't start making a big drama. They didn't say, oh my God, have you heard? Oh, you poor thing. They didn't run down the hill to get him. They waited for him to pick himself up and walk up to them. And then just gave him the bike and got on with it. Now, what was interesting about that is children don't know how to fall. So they need to get up on some places where they will know how to fall. And a lot of children nowadays hurt themselves. There are more children now breaking bones than ever before. Why is that? When I was young, nobody broke a bone. Like, honest to God, if you saw a child with a plaster on, you'd be thinking, what the hell's that? Nowadays, lots of children break bones because they don't know how to fall, because they have poor balance, because they have poor physical literacy. And they might have certain reflexes that haven't been integrated because they haven't been allowed to go through their natural development. So one such reflex is a reflex called the parachute reflex. When you first get a baby to sit down on, you know, when, you, you know, when you're pregnant and then they're sitting, they'll fall over. They'll either go this way, they'll go that way. But you will notice that automatically their hand will go out to stop them. And they might be able to then upright themselves. It's, an auto, it's called the parachute reflex. And it just goes down and they upright themselves. This reflex needs to be integrated. Because if you are a seven year old or a 17 year old or a 37 year old, and you fall, you need to fall by either crumpling your knees or you need to fall and roll. But you don't need to fall and put your arm down using the parachute reflex because your body is too heavy for your arm now and you'll break your wrist. So you see here, a reflex can actually cause you an injury you know, there, there are times people fall and they don't hurt themselves because they don't. An automatic reflex doesn't come online to try and save them. So that's how they can actually affect you and cause more injuries further down the line. What you'll find with children um, and actually adults, this, this doesn't go away. Easily distracted, lacks concentration, constant movement. Now you will have, you know, you know adults like that. Poor abstract reasoning skills. Poor abstract reasoning skills because they're poor at doing concrete skills. It makes sense. The brain finds it easier, easier to learn concretely rather than abstract. Yet children are gone on, going on to abstract concepts too early when the body, body isn't able to reason concretely. 
uh, retain reflexes will show you a child with poor coordination will show you a child who's very sensitive to stimuli and by that i mean things like or and or sound auditory uh, uh, lights visual um, clothes labels so in different ways to different stimuli they'll show poor handwriting skills letter reversals so remember i said about the letter reversal that if gravitational uh, security is, in, is poor that's what that's going to show they, they've shown that autistic children by the age of three months already have a different reflex pattern autistic children in particularly have the fear reflex which hasn't been integrated the moral reflex which hasn't been integrated and the tender guard reflex and that's why you see a lot of autistic children walking on their toes because what happens with the tendon guard reflex is actually uh, a reflex that's a good reflex to have in terms of it, 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 it kind of arms you. A tendon guard reflex is more like a postural reflex, but say you're in the house and you hear something fall in the garage, your whole body from your toe to up, up, up to this area, there's a sheath around your body like a big stocking will contract and your whole body will go still the tendon guard is a guard reflex will stop you and you'll stop for a minute doing whatever you're doing regardless because it's automatic and the reason the body wants to you stop is stop and listen to where that noise came from now, if it's a garage and you think, oh my God, the cat's knocked something over, the body can go back into relax. But if it's something else, now you will tendon guard reflex. You see, this reflex is guarding you. It's important, this reflex. It needs to stay online. But with autistic children, they're always in that tendon guard reflex. It doesn't allow them to go back and relax. And because, because it um, starts from the toe up to the, this area in the forehead, um, it, they're, they're guarded the whole time. And so they then start walking on their toes because for them to put their um, tendon down, it starts hurting them too much. It's painful. A lot of people who are in fear will find that all the back, uh, the calf muscle at the back of the leg is very sore, very painful. And not only does that guard it there, it pulls in the sacrum and the um, uh, cervical uh, uh, link because it's guarding the spine and it'll pull in all the head because it's guarding in case you get hit or you have to run, you don't want your head lolling around. So these people that are really tight, tendon guard reflex is coming on too, too much. The, the reason why a tendon guard re reflex would continue to come on too much, like these autistic children, is because the moral reflex and the fear reflex hasn't been integrated. So autistic children already show an abnormal uh, uh, reflex pattern. Now, a lot of us have one or two reflexes that haven't been integrated and we can integrate them at any time. That's okay. It's when you get a great cluster of them that are persistent, a, a cluster of reflexes that they begin to uh, affect you. And basically, if the primitive reflexes are not integrated they act as rascals rather than angels so remember primitive reflexes are there for your survival early on and if they're not integrated they're having a negative effect on you so that's why we call them retained 
reflex, retained primitive reflexes. They should not be retained. They're only there for a short period of time. And then if they keep coming on automatically, what happens is they begin to hijack the, the reflex. So before we go into specific reflexes now, let's just do that sequence again. And remember, this sequence is helping you with your postural ref reflexes and with your physical literacy. So if you stand up. Okay. So you're going to start with your right arm. So arm, leg, leg, arm. Reverse it. Arm, leg leg, arm. Now together, arm and leg, left arm and leg, reverse it. Left arm and right, left leg, right arm and right leg. So now right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg, reverse it. Left arm, right leg, right arm, right leg. Now together, right arm, right leg, left right arm left leg right arm left arm left leg left arm right leg and reverse it left arm right leg left and left right and left and together and when you're working with this then what you're going to do is do five cycles that's just one cycle so you would do five cycles if you take a seat These sequences really help to um, in, uh, help the postural reflexes. And you'll see that when you do the opposite, when you do the opposite, you need to have good balance, don't you? Otherwise you're not going in. And you don't just do these sequences standing up. So actually you start with the sequencing, we're doing it standing up, lying down. So the child would be, on their back lying down and then uh, the arm would go along the ground and the leg would go around the, the ground then they do it on their hands and knees then they would do it standing up the reason is obviously that's how how babies develop on the on the back or on the front um hands and knees and and then standing up okay because you're defying gravity now, if you haven't already done so, we the I we have I have a, a simple physical uh, literacy website with Dr. Uh, Emma Blake, and we've developed that uh, website um, to to help schools to uh, integrate uh, primitive reflexes or or even uh, individuals by using just the exercises. So that hasn't got the kinesiology element. But if you haven't already done so, we're giving away that, actually the home program, free on that at the moment. So if you just sign up, you can download the home program. And on the home program, you will get all these reflexes. The, it's, no, on the home program, you will get all the, um, the um, sequences. This 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 booklet actually that I'm asked that, that I was going to send you is actually the whole program, but it's in a in a printed form. So if you're happy with just having it online, that's okay. But if you want it in a printed form, then um, email me and I can I can send that to you. So there on that simple physical literacy website you will get all the sequences i've shown you one there are eight so you'll get those free and you'll get the home program from you you can do it yourself or you can do it with your child okay so now let's just go on to um the moral reflex um the moral reflex is the, the, the reflex that helps the baby survive as soon as it's born. Uh, and it makes the baby get into this fight and flight stage because 
is trying to make sure that the baby just breathes from the chest, short breaths, and not from the stomach, because its stomach is all about being relaxed. It doesn't want baby to be relaxed when it comes out. So it wants baby to start breathing quickly, because that is an absolute priority. So nature is so clever. It says, I'm going to set this baby up in fight and flight right now. I want its heart rate, rate to increase. I want all the adrenals to start pumping all these different um, stuff around the body. I want it to breathe in a shallow way. So, and I want it to be alert as soon as it's born, because I want it to survive. And so that's how the baby comes out in a really alert fashion, in a fight and flight fashion, which is perfect. And what happens, uh, this, this moral reflex is initiated by the vestibular response. So you'll see the babies, um, you might see a, doc, a doctor just kind of, you know, in this with the baby to initiate this response, this exact, exact response. So what happens is you get this response where the arms go up and the head goes back. All right. And what's the reason for that? The reason for that is basically this response is think making the body, if somebody's going to come and attack you, the first response will to be withdraw from it, push back, yes? Get back and get your head back. Then the second part of it, to curl up into a small ball, is to protect all your organs. So, so if somebody attacks you, the first one will be to get away and the second bit will be actually curl up if you're not able to fight it. So that is the reflex. And that is exactly the exercise you need to do to actually integrate that reflex. So do you remember earlier on I said to you that the actual integration is the same pattern of the, the, um, the uh, body movement. It's just more of that same pattern. So the, 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 the exercise that would help a moral reflex to develop is that you would Oh, get the child to put a, like a cushion or pillars underneath the chest, get the child to go very, very slowly, like open up lying down in a big star shape and then close up and curl up into a small ball and then back into this big, and it's just three simple, three, ex three of these very slow movements a day will help integrate a moral reflex. So um, if this moral reflex is not integrated and it's retained, basically this body is now living in fight and flight. And so this will overload the system and there'll be lots of adrenal, uh, adrenaline kicking around. So you'll get things like lots of allergies, asthma, eczema. The reason is um, the the system is, is, is not able to process, process properly anything it eats because all the energy system is, is, is based in this fight and flight response. When a body is in fight and flight, it can't digest properly. Yeah, so, and then not only can't it digest properly, because there's too much, uh, it, it, it there's, there's too much ad uh, uh, adrenal, you know, the, the, you can get adrenal fatigue as well, but also you get a lot of allergies because the digestion part isn't working properly. So the body start not only is starting to react against things or reject things. Overall, you're, you've just got this body in this constant fight and flight, and you might uh, see it with the, uh, you, you'll see, the, you, if you've ever seen a, um, 
person, and for some reason it happens to be guys more than ladies, having a, uh, uh, what's it called, not a temper tantrum, you know when the car, when the guy gets out of the car because he's really annoyed that the car, oh God, I can't think of the word. Anyway, um, when, when men drive the car, it's like they're hunting. And when another car comes up too close, if that moral reflex isn't been integrated, that will feel like it's a threat from the other car and the person will go out and react. God, I can't remember the name of it. Road rage. Road rage, God. <laughs> I need to do more salsa. <laughs> I blame COVID for not letting me do salsa for five months. Yeah, road rage. If you see a person in road rage, isn't that just a two-year-old having a temper tantrum? And you can't say a word to them because really the truth of the matter is they will feel that car try to attack them. That's what road rage is. So what happens is also if anybody's got a moral reflex and the, with an adult more, you see this with an adult, you go up and you touch them from behind. They'll, they'll actually go, oh my God, oh my God. You know, didn't know you were there. Take a big, if this happens to you, you, you do feel, say, oh my God. Sometimes the, the, the reaction is automatic. So remember I told you that when I had my car accident at 21, I got the moral reflex back online. But makes sense, doesn't it? I got a um, whiplash injury. So that, that movement, the vestibular movement going backwards, would, you know, it's, it makes sense anyway. So I had this moral reflex and I remember um, it's, not, it's not good to be in that reflex um, because what it makes you do is you become a little bit inflexible. You always like to take control of things because the reason is you're in a, in a situation where you think something might attack you. So you want to know where everything is laid out. So you're in control. Um, you're always on kind of a red alert moving around. You find it hard to just sit down and relax. You, you always feel as if you need to be doing something, which, which, which is the moral way saying do something because there might be something attacking you. But, uh, so what, I, what happened, I was walking on the, ro on the road and uh, a guy came in. I mean, he actually t touched me inappropriately on my backside. But what I did was I went like that, shocked, swiveled round and slapped him. That was not a thought. That was an automatic reaction, yeah? That was me defending myself. But if you've got a perverted guy touching your bottom, you don't want to slap him. Because the next thing happened was he was like uh, chasing me. And it was good that I was able to outrun him and got in my car and drive off. But it was automatic. It was not something that I would wanted to do. Uh, so this is what happens with, the, with the, uh, a lot of children. I used to observe the children when they were queuing up, right? And then somebody would turn around and whack somebody and I, you tell them off please don't do that no 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 i don't know why i did it don't know and they don't know why they did it because what was happening was as they were lining up somebody would bang up and they turn around and whack them and it was what is it it's an automatic reaction and the poor child will want to stop but they just react so with children in particular, and also with adults, because you're feeling fight and flight, your eyes will not function in the correct way. And how your eyes will function is in a peripheral way. In other words, um, your eyes are not happy to fixate on, say, your teacher who's talking to you or the adult who's talking to you. 
they are working in a peripheral way. They are almost scanning all around you. Why? Because if something is going to attack you, you need to be aware of all everything's around you, not what's in front of you. That thing's not going to attack you. So, so you see these children who are on constant alert in a class. So if they hear, uh, they, 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 you, their eyes will be wandering and the teacher will say, look at me, look at me. Or if they hear a noise, say a pencil drops at the back of the room, they will immediately turn around and have a look at that and maybe keep looking at it, double checking it's not an animal attacking them. And then by the time they look back to the teacher, they've lost sense of what the teacher's saying. Now that they've lost, you know, a whole sentence could have passed. And now they think, what, what is she talking about? They've lost that. But it's not that they deliberately, like 80% of the children would just keep looking at the teacher because the body won't say, oh, pencil drop, somebody's coming in to attack you. But those that have moral reflex would be looking at that. That's how it affects them. They can't focus on the teacher. And we know that one way you know somebody's focused on you is if they look at you. So that's how all the, the moral, the, the, um, a lot of um, children are diagnosed nowadays with asthma. But actually, it's not asthma. It's the way they're breathing. You know, they're breathing very shallow from their um, chest. If, if they're just allowed to breathe, if they're taught how to breathe properly. And actually, the other, the other reason is lack of water can mimic asthma. I mean, pure, simple water, not water uh, with orange juice. So that's how you would see the profile of the, the child with the moral reflex or an adult with the moral reflex. And this child will always have emotional outbursts. And again, in that emotional outburst, they'll have an emotional outburst at any point they feel as if they're being attacked. And the attack is the brain decides what it thinks is going to attack you. So they will, if a moral reflex sets up, the brain that controls that moral reflex is the back part of the brain, which does not allow thinking. It's not the thinking brain. So for example, a person sitting down to do an exam or a test might react in a moral reflex might react to it as a threat at which point the brain the back brain comes online there is no thinking process going on they've forgotten everything they've learned they can't think about it so um it's because the body is in fight and flight and the moral reflex is there to um, initiate that. The part of the brain that initiates the moral reflex is the amygdala part. And the amygdala part of the brain is about a tiny, tiny, tiny side, this tiny, but it is the general of the army. If the amygdala speaks, forget everything else, because amygdala is taking control and it's there to help you save your life and the way the amygdala works is like this you're walking along a road and a car is coming towards you if you stand there thinking if i don't cross if i don't move across the way this car is going to attack me uh, this car is going to actually it is the word is attack this car is going to kill me if you're standing there thinking you'll be dead however the amygdala part which initiates this this reflex which is there to save your life will initiate you to move off the road then you'll get off the road and you think oh my god if i hadn't moved i could have been killed then the thinking brain comes online 
Anybody with a moral reflex is continually hijacked by the amygdala. And that includes any adult. And that includes even when you're doing therapy with somebody, why you need to work on the amygdala part, why you need to integrate the reflex. Anybody with, uh, coming for a therapy, the first thing you need to do is integrate the moral reflex. And then the rest of the work will sit nicely because it, the rest of the work won't be hijacked. So either the child is being hijacked by the moral reflex or an adult is being hijacked by a moral reflex. And you will know people that the minute you say bring in an argument, for instance, about something, they will get into this real place where black is white and white is black and there's no talking to them at that point. When somebody is in a moral reflex, be it a child, be it the road rage person, be it somebody you're having an argument with, do not talk to them. Because the more you talk to them, the more you make them feel under threat. The best thing to do is withdraw because what's happened is they've taken over by the moral reflex. Let the reflex reset itself and then have a conversation. Child having a temper, temp, temper tantrum or flipping out, don't try and discipline them at that point. Let it happen. Go back to it because the moral reflex or the amygdala part of the brain that initiates this is not interested in any thinking, is interested in survival. And anywhere where you say, think about it, think how you're behaving now. No, I'm not thinking. I am trying to survive here. And that's why the stress on the exams, I'm not thinking, I'm trying to survive here. So, uh, actually we've got spinal gland, we're going, we'll, we'll come back to the spinal gland. The, the next reflex that is very important that comes into the developmental order is the asymmetrical tonic necritic reflex. And basically, this is activated during birth, helps the free passage of uh, air and helps the baby to come down the birth canal. And the the most important thing about the asymmetrical tonic neck writing is, can you see on this picture, as the arm extends, the leg is extends on the same side, yeah? And as the arm bends on the other side, that's bent. But it's the, as the arm begins to extend, the leg extends. But what causes all of that to extend is actually the movement of the head. So whichever way the baby turns their head, that arm extends extends. So it's the head turn that controls that reflex. Whereas in the moral reflex, it's the head going off uh, alignment that controls that reflex. And this uh, position is, if a baby is put on their front, a baby is more likely to keep turning their head because it's natural. And as they turn, the arm extends and the leg extends. So what happens is if the baby's put in the right position, the neck will keep turning and the arm and the leg will extend. And guess what? The reflex gets integrated. And if the babies turn on the back, they don't tend to do that action. That's why they say tummy time is really important. But for some reason, what happens is if a baby isn't put on their front very early on, they don't like tummy time. Uh, and so they don't, they scream and shout. But if the baby is sleeping on the front, uh, they automatically do this exercise by themselves and integrate the ATNR reflex by themselves. While they're integrating this reflex, babies who's often in the front will lift up their neck like this as well. They will also develop all their neck muscles. This is where I'm saying that the medical profession has interfered because they put baby on the back. Now, if the neck muscles aren't integrated, then what happens is 
that's going to affect the balance of all the head and that's going to affect the way the eyes are working. And I, again, I know about this because when I was, uh, when I had my car accident, I was um, on my back for three months and then I had the neck collar, a big collar on for six months and a neck collar on for nearly a year. By the time I took all of that, my neck muscles had gone completely. And if you haven't got good neck muscles, can I just tell you, you feel so tired. And that's why a lot of children who are going into school come out exhausted. Their neck muscles haven't been developed because they've been put on the back. When babies are put on the back as well, they, the, 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 they start to get this very flat head at the back, which is not normal. Because when a baby's coming down the birth canal, the, the sutures compress in like that to narrow the head for, for it to come through. And then they should come open like that. However, if the baby is put on the back, it locks up some of the sutures and creates this flat, flat head at the back, which creates their ability, the ability of the brain to get the oxygen, receive the oxygen it needs. So that has an ongoing effect on the, the head. So it doesn't, doesn't let it all open up. So if a, a child has poor neck muscles, they'll slouch around a lot because to be upright, this head actually weighs a, a, a stone. You think about the neck where it's actually sitting, that's a big weight, isn't it? Children who find it really hard at school is because like they find it really tired. They're finding it hard to learn because they're really tired because the neck muscles aren't developed. So if you've got a young child or access to a young child, get them to lie down on their back and ask them to just lift their head up. What you will see is they'll lift their head up a lot, very quickly, and they will use their shoulders because what they're doing is lifting their head up with their back muscles. Then ask them to lift their head up to 45 degrees. That's very little and say, keep your shoulders on the floor. Now you are only making them use their neck muscles to lift up. 60, 65, 70% of children that I see do not have good neck muscles to be do not have to be able to lift their head up. It's just ridiculous. So you have to start developing those neck muscles. Those neck muscles haven't developed properly because they were not allowed to develop properly. If you put a baby on their back, they don't have the ability to lift their neck up when they're on their back because the neck muscles haven't developed. If you put baby on their front, they use their front part of the body to start lifting their head up. And as they're doing that, the neck muscles begin to develop. Now, if this reflex has not integrated, what happens is, can you see that the one arm and the same arm and the same leg uh, extend? Yeah. So what happens is they're homolaterally bound. And what that means is that they're, they're using the same arm and the same leg. And if they're using the same arm and same leg and they can't, they haven't isolated that, when it comes to crawling, they won't be able to crawl. Because you cannot crawl with the same arm and same leg. You have to brace yourself with the opposite arm when you're crawling. Try that when you're home and you're on your own. Try crawling by moving the same arm and same leg and then try crawling, moving the opposite arm and opposite leg and see the difference. Now, if they haven't 
started using opposite arm and opposite leg, they're not going to enjoy running. And it's also going to stop them um, integrating their symmetrical tonic neck writing reflex, which is the one that you integrate when you crawl. So the ATNR has a knock on effect on the STNR. And also, if you haven't completely uh, integrated your moral reflex, when you integrate your um, ATNR, that finishes the completes the integration of the moral reflex. Honestly, nature is so clever. Everything goes tick, 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 tick. Same movement integrates it. You don't need a lot of it. If you get it early on, you need a lot more if you don't get it early on. And then um, uh, it's done. If you haven't integrated your ATNR reflex, then what, one of the things that you begin to see is a child who finds, has a, has a really odd pencil grip. And the reason that pencil grip is odd is because every time the head moves, the arm wants to move, extend out, right? So if a child is copying from a blackboard and moves the head, the arm wants to extend. And what happens is they'll find this funny grip, push it into the paper. So when the head moves, the arm stays there. But the minute they're pushing into the paper, you're having to use up all of this muscle now to write. It's really hard. It's really tiring. They won't write a lot because you only need this, these finger muscles to be able to write. One, they won't like writing a lot. Two, they won't like cursive writing because it's cursive writing needs flow in the wrist. Three, their writing will go, instead of going down the margin, they'll kind of keep going like that. This now has an effect on the amount they write. And then the other thing that I used to notice is if you got right-handed, um, person who got an ATNR reflex child sitting next to a left-handed child who's got an ATNR reflex, um, they bang against each other because the arm will automatically go out by itself and then somebody goes, he just hit me. He didn't just hit you. He turned his head and his arm flung out and now you think he hit you. It can cause that kind of, I remember teaching and thinking, What's the matter with that child? Why do they keep whacking? I keep, they keep promising. But it's, it was just automatic, arm, head turn, arm turn, automatic. So it, it, it kind of works in that way. But um, in particular with the ATNR, in particular the moral reflex affects emotional um, stability. So a child with a moral reflex will be having loads of outbursts. ATNR, they will not like uh, writing. But also what happens with the ATNR reflex is the eyes don't begin to cross the midline. Because the ATNR stops this STNR, symmetrical tonic neck writing reflex from integrating, when the symmetrical tonic neck writing uh, uh, Inflex, um, reflex is integrating, the head start to cross the midline. But if the ATNR stops it, what happens is, you know when a baby is very young and you give them a, a cup, they won't cross the midline and take it. They will go with this hand, take it and then pass it into this head hand because they don't know they have the ability to do that. But what happens is when they're reading, one eye will come to the middle, then the other eye will take over. In the middle here, they will lose some text. So children will have, uh, who keep misreading the middle bit or losing text. 
have the ATNR reflex. So you see, does it actually affect the reading as well then? Not only that, obviously this, this child is not going to like running because that's all opposite, not homolateral, contralateral. I remember uh, m when my, one of my sons was saying, oh, I hate running on the, on the um, treadmill. And then I realized he had the ATNR reflex. Of course, he would feel as if he was falling off it. So we integrated the um, ATNR reflex and now suddenly he can run on a treadmill. So as an adult, can you see how the importance you want to be, you want to be keep physically fit, but actually you can't run on the, tre on the treadmill because you've got an ATNR reflex. Um, so there's a pencil fighting force, the fluency is affected and 50% of children with dyslexia and speech problems have um, ATNR reflex and about 70% of children with dyslexia have balance issues. Because remember, if the balance issues, if there are balance issues, then the eyes will go off. And what happens is there are, whenever a child is trying to read, there are certain um, eye functions that are required for reading. So the ability to track, the ability to fixate, the ability to for binocular fusion, fusion. In other words, each eye sees a different image, and then you need to put those two images together. And the ability to converge, so put those two uh, uh, images together. So each reflex has an effect on an eye function. So any reflexes that are not integrated, that are retained, will affect the way the child is seeing the word on paper. And so therefore, they will have a problem reading. So the ATNR, for, for example, affects um, uh, tracking, the ability to track. The moral reflex, uh, 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 affects fixation. STNR is binocular fusion and TLR, tonic labyrinthine writing, is convergence. So the eyes are affected by the reflexes. Now you cannot work on the eyes unless you sort out the reflexes. A lot of children with Asperger's also show this asymmetrical tonic decorated reflex that needs to be integrated. And remember I was, I was telling you about the boy who had Asperger's and then once I integrated all his reflex, he was no longer diagnosed with that. It, it took me a long time to integrate his ATNR reflex. Do you know what? I remember looking at him thinking, oh my God, how is it that you, how is this even possible? So first of all, I did his, I integrated his ATNR, but it was so deeply embedded that he couldn't move his eyes independently of his head. Now, if you've got, if you've got any text there in front of you, pick it up. And I want you to Try and read it by moving your head. Keep your eyes still, but you're going to track it by moving your head. And see how you feel. It should make you feel a bit sick. And, and so, some children who, because, because they don't have the ability to actually move their eyes, independent to their head, feel sick when they're reading. But they don't know because that's how it feels for them, do you know? They're not going to do a lot of reading. So this boy, I remember saying, watch, so watch the my pencil and I, I was doing this and I wanted him to follow it with his eyes and he couldn't. So how was he able to follow 
when we are tracking words on a piece of uh, paper reading we should just follow with our eyes we couldn't do that so we had to work on lots of issues around the ATNR reflex that really helped him massively. And it all starts because the doctors have interfered and put their put ba said baby on the back. The reason they said put baby on the back was um, they started to find that they started to find some cot deaths. Do you remember the SIDS? It's called SIDS. And um, uh, then they decided to put the baby on the f on the back instead of letting him sleep on the front. And in, eventually, there was a research done as to what was causing that. And what they found was that um, when the baby was on the front, that these they somebody developed some new mattresses something to do with you know when they get wet it doesn't affect the baby what you know if they leak and stuff like that but what was happening was because they they put some kind of stuff in the mattress when the baby was on their front and sideways you know the baby dribbled the warm uh saliva caused some kind of uh reaction with this whatever toxin was in the mattress and babies were dying from that because it caused some kind of fumes but nobody ever then brought this research up and said to the doctors you're making a mistake it was only because of these mattresses the babies were dying not because they were sleeping on their front i even had a doctor who brought her child to me to sort out their moral not moral reflex yeah one was moral reflex reflexes and i and i said look part of the problem has been with it with him sleeping on the front uh, with, with him sleeping not sleeping on the front with him sleeping on the back and she said something like why is that i said what do you mean why is that you're the doctor you you lot tell us not to put baby on the front no idea but obviously they're just following orders need to go back and look at the research but the research isn't continuous they find something new and they're finding something new they they used to think the cerebellum is just interested in in movement no planning judgment time that is why a lot of dyslexic children with have uh with coordination problems uh a lot of dyslexic when they come big when they get to adulthood find procrastination planning organization poor really poor cannot do it some dyslexics can actually read organization is poor when i was 46 when i started to do my phd i found out i was dyslexic but obviously, having gone through the program of physical education enabled me to eventually, you know, to, to be able to do a PhD. But still, I remember, uh, I would say one of my, uh, so I, the certain types of organization I really don't mind. And the certain, certain types of organization I'm not keen on. So I would never be in a job that would be to organize. But you know, I play on my strengths. So the point of that is dyslexia is not just in the, oh, the child can't read. There's so all sorts of forms of dyslexia that comes through. One of them is organization. And you know what the interesting thing about dyslexia and dyslexic children is? The education authority finally pays attention to dyslexic students when they get to university. When they get to university. Can you imagine how hard it is for them to get to university? When they get to university, they get personal tutors, they get um, 
uh, all this equipment, they get computers, they get personal tutors to help them organize their essays month, weekly. They get extra time. The amount of money that goes in, but really they need the help earlier on. They need at age five or six to integrate their reflexes so that they have proper access to learning, not when they get to university. A handful are getting to university. Or maybe like me, I scraped into a PE college and then was able to... By the way, just about this PE college, so remember I was one of the, the, the learning difficulty one in the, in, the, in the certificate group. I was their top student when I left with, the, with another one. I nearly got, I was out by 1% from first class degree. So really interesting, isn't it? That how you, when you, through, through physical activity, my brain was able to utilize all its potential. So we know physical literacy is important. We know if there are primitive reflexes that are not integrated, physical literacy isn't going to be online. We know therefore physical literacy is not, poor physical literacy is not going to help a person attune to their full potential, whatever it is that their potential is. So going back to the spinal gland, that was the back here, Going back to the slide, so that we've got the moral reflex, the ADA. spinal gland reflex is very interesting because this is the one, if you, if you look on this picture, if you take a pencil and just run down the side of the spine, down the hip, off each side of, the, of a child, and they wriggle around with, the, uh, with their hips, it shows there's a spinal gland reflex that's on. And that is its ability to sit still and in the pants. A child with a spinal gallant reflex that has not been integrated is the child with the ants in the pants. And they have also, it's linked in with the he, inner hearing because uh, there's some research that shows that when a baby is in the womb that it's through the spine they hear, which is really fascinating. Um, so it's, it's, it's in that area. So attention, it affects attention, focus, concentration, coordination, posture, and bedwetting. So what happens is, uh, on the lower part of the sacrum, you know, that big bone at the back, that is where it's most sensitive. And what happens is, when uh, anything touches that, it can cause bedwetting. So if they'd like turn around and, and, and uh, uh, sleep in the, on their back in the middle, middle of it, that would cause, can cause bedwetting. So sometimes just by integrating the spinal gallant reflex, you stop bedwetting. The other thing is that whenever they put their back up against a chair, that is causing sensitivity on that area and they'll wriggle away from it. And you see those children that slouch, like you think sit up, but actually if they sat up and put their back up against the chair, that would set them off with the spinal gallant. And the one thing I used to notice about my son was his trousers do always used to be nearly falling off. It's like 15 and a half and I used to think, I used to be tired of saying, pull your trousers up, pull your trousers up. And then I found out when he pulled his trousers up, that band along the trousers was irritating his spinal gallant. So he kept it low. When, when he, I had his reflexes integrated, suddenly he started pulling his trousers up and looked smarter. And the other thing he used to do was rock a lot. There was something about the rocking and when his reflexes was, it you know what? He used to sit opposite me at the dinner table and he was like six foot by the time he was 15 and he was always rocking on his chair and he used to say, stop it, stop, just, just sit normally. 
rock, rock, rock. When his reflexes uh, were integrated, suddenly he stopped rocking in his chair. Like I had years of sitting opposite him, eating. Oh, the other thing was um, dribbling. So there's a, a, a rooting reflex that was integrated. He ate in a different way, he stopped dribbling so much. So all very interesting. Curvature of the spine is that uh, is minor scoliosis can be caused by the spinal gland reflex. Because when you do that test, you'll see that they keep, they, 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 they kind of wiggle around with their um, uh, hips. So whenever that part is, they're always wiggling around, move, trying to move away from that, whatever is causing that sensitivity on their back. So it can cause a bit of a curvature of the, the spine. So that's the ACA. Symmetrical tonic neck writing, STNR, is the um, integration uh, of the upper and lower portions of the, the body. Can you see that's when they do that, uh, when they're doing their crawling. So the, the crawling part is very important. So if they don't integrate this one and they don't do all of their crawling, then this is all affecting you all. If the STNR hasn't been integrated, what you'll see is a posture which is poor. So there's a tendency to slump when sitting at a desk or a table. And, you know, and also you'll see them, you know, when, you, when they're doing their work, like their head lies on the, on the table and they're like writing like this. Um, poorly developed muscle tone because now they're gonna have poorly developed muscle tone the minute you put them on the back. Because when the baby's on the front and they keep lifting up here, that's when they're developing all this muscle tone as well from the head to the hips, you know, lifting up like that. So then they have STNR which has an integrated because ATNR has an integrated then they now have this poor muscle tone. And I'm sure you will see lots of children that look slouchy. When you integrate the reflexes, suddenly their whole muscle tone begins to develop as well. I remember doing a, uh, uh, a demonstration when I was teaching on how to integrate a moral reflex. And uh, I, was using, I was using kinesiology and energy medicine, but this girl, so then she went, to, she, she volunteered. Oh, oh, I said, I'd forgotten. She went off and I said, oh, come back, come back and lie on the, on the massage table. I said, I've forgotten to show you the exercise. Because remember the exercise is the one with the star shape coming up into curl ball and going very slowly out again. I said, I'll just show you how to do the exercise. And she was really reluctant to come back on the table. She said, I can't do that. I said, what do you mean? She said, I can't, I can't, uh, uh, you know, I won't be able to sit up like that because of my stomach muscles. She said, they're not really well developed. I just integrated a moral reflex using kinesiology. So I said, well, we'll have a go anyway. So she lay down and blow me. She couldn't believe it because immediately those muscles has come on online and she was like able to, she said, I can't believe that those muscles are working. It was like the muscle tone had come online. Muscle tone is really important because again, if children have poor muscle tone, they'll get really tired going to school. Um, so 75% of children with learning difficulties have not done the proper crawling or have um, got an STNR reflex that's not integrated. Okay, so I'm gonna point you, point you to the website, www.simplephysicalliteracy.com, where you can get the free download of the home program, but also you will get uh, loads of information about the reflexes. Uh, uh, and also, if you go to 
my child center method www.childcenter c e n t r e uh, method.com you will get the research uh, there's a research section so you can read about the phd and how you know primitive reflexes affect children but on the simple one there is also a youtube channel uh, called Simple Physical Literacy. If you go on there, there's loads of information about all the different individual reflexes. And on there are the some of the exercises that you can do as well to integrate those uh, reflexes. Uh, this is just kind of pinpointing the fact that the self lives in the body that you are embodied beings and the body is great intelligence that really we need to pay attention to the body make sure these pr primitive reflexes are integrated so therefore make sure that we're online with physical literacy because this physical literacy helps us to become um, more literate there i've got all the the websites uh, and my two email addresses there. There's two. Do you know what? The Simple Physical Literacy website should be on there. Anyway, um, what you can do is email me individually if you're finding it hard to, uh, uh, you know, f uh, find any of these websites. There's also a Facebook page. Uh, uh, a child center method Facebook page that you can like that we often put out videos or information or and a simple physical literacy uh, Facebook page to find out more about the the primitive reflexes um, okay what I'm going to do now just come off here um, and I'm going to stop